Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is lecture video 32, part B. We are in section 8.2, and this is the fourth part and final part. We're going to do an example, another example. So um, last time, or in this series for section 8.2, we are talking about estimating mu when sigma is not known. In other words, we don't know sigma, so what we do have for the standard deviation is S. And we discuss degrees of freedom, students' t distribution, how to read a t table. We uh, discuss how to find critical values. And then we did an example where we computed the confidence interval for mu when sigma is not known, and we interpreted this, the confidence interval. We're going to do the same in this video. Um, so we're going to continue with an example, a second example, computing the confidence interval for mu when sigma is not known and interpreting that confidence interval. So let's get started with this example. Let's do an example real quick. Let's look at, uh, this is 8.2 problem 15 from your book, and it's about mountain lions. And it says, how, how much do mountain lions weigh? And so they took a sample of uh, adult mountain lions, 18 months or older, uh, that were captured and released for the first time in the San Andreas Mountains. Now, I want to point out that there are mountain lions all over the U.S. Not all over, but in many parts of the U.S. So is it necessarily true that mountain lions in the San Andreas uh, Mountains have the same mean weight as mountain lions uh, in Virginia? And the answer is no. So I would be very careful about my interpretation here. Okay, so uh, they it says that uh, adult mountain lions captured and released for the first time in the San Andres Mountains have a sample mean, x bar equals 91, and so and S is equal to 30.7. That's our sample standard deviation. And there are six um, mountain lions that are used in this sample. This is a very small sample. So we have to know or assume that the population of weights for mountain lions is normally distributed or approximately normally distributed. Okay. Well, the degrees of freedom are N minus 1. And so that gives us five for the degrees of freedom. Now we need to go to our table and find our T value. And we need the confidence level. And we've been told that the confidence level is going to be 75% or 0.75. In this table, that's exactly what I'm going to look for in this third row up at the top. I'm going to look across here and find 0 0.750. And then I need to come down until I get to 5 degrees of freedom. And that's 1.301. And so that's what I've written here as the critical value, T, 0.75 with 5 degrees of freedom. Now, do not multiply. Okay, Don't multiply the 5. This whole thing in the box, that is equal to 1.301. They're the same thing, okay? So when I plug in to E, um, E is equal to TC S over square root of N. So here's my um, critical value T. I'm not multiplying it by 5. I put that in. That is the value of T T, C, um, degrees of freedom, okay, right there, 1.301. And then I put in S, which is 30.7, and s square root of 6, which is our N, and I get for E, 16.3057. Now, all of the values are to one decimal place. Maybe I should change color here. So they're all the one decimal place, both. And so I'm going to round this to one decimal place. Okay, to use. 
and you'll see that here's my formula for the confidence interval, x bar minus e, x bar plus e. So I simply fill in 91.0 and 16.3. I subtract for the uh, lower, I add for the upper. And we end up with 74.7 to 107.3. That is our 75% confidence interval, or CI. The important part here is the interpretation. So the underlined portion is what we need to fill in. Okay. All right. So we are 75% confidence. This is C, our confidence level, that the interval, this is our CI, 74.7 to 107.3, and I added pounds, the units, contains the true population mean of what? Of the weight of mountain lions, and specifically in the San Andreas Mountains. And this is calculated from a simple random sample. A simple random sample of n equals 6 mountain lions. Well, that's the end of this video. Please remember to scan your lecture notes before midnight of the date listed on the course calendar. If you have questions, please come to virtual office hours. I am very happy to help you, as always. If you can't do that, then you're welcome to email me. But when you email me, I need two things from you. The first is a picture of the problem so that I can help you through email. I may not have the problem available to me. If you don't send me the problem, then you're going to have to wait until I get back to my computer and get that problem pulled up. So please send me a picture of the problem. The second thing you need to send me is a picture of your work so far. This helps me understand how you're approaching the problem and may help me or will help me uh, help you faster and better. So I hope you will stay safe and take care of yourself. Until next time, we'll see you then.